Hello, and welcome back to Coop Corner at Manapro Yoke Tube, brought to you by City Yokes, where we've built a community of the coolest chicks and chickens in the city. As we continue to go through the incubation process here at Coop Corner, we're bringing back our expert, Margaret, to guide you through the whole process. First up, we'll learn how to identify good eggs and bad eggs, which is an important skill both in life and in raising a flock. But there's so much more to it than that. We'll let Margaret take it from here. Welcome back to the farm. Today, we're gonna check in on our peeps and shed some light on what's going on inside those little eggs. So let's get started and talk about how to check on them while they are incubating. Congratulations, you've made it through your first week of incubation with your little chicks. Now it's time to check in on the peeps with a method called candling. By definition, candling just means shining a light through the egg. Candling will help you determine if your chick embryos are growing properly and identify those eggs you need to remove from the incubator to prevent them from becoming rotten. Those rotten eggs can cause problems and contaminate your incubator. A tip from the farm, those dark colored eggs with lots of pigment require a brighter candling light. It's harder to see through. Candling should be done quickly and not all at once to minimize the drop in temperatures and humidity. Do not keep an egg out of your incubator for more than five minutes at a time. Another tip, as you handle those eggs, always wash your hands before and after handling to reduce the risk of further contamination, both to the eggs and to yourself. Now that we have a little background on this candling process, what exactly are we looking for at days, say seven to 10? A solid mass or gray blob will indicate that the embryo is actually growing in the egg. Eggs that seem clear signal infertility or that the embryo just hasn't made it. And those will be removed at this time. Red rings will signal that the embryo has died and these eggs should also be removed. Blood vessels mean life. Yes, they're growing. You can typically observe these blood vessels as early as seven days of incubation. You should also check each egg for cracks or any leakage and remove them immediately. You don't want that in the incubator at those high temperatures. Don't forget to update your air sac mark on the blunt end of the egg and monitor the appropriate humidity level. If the air cell is in development at a normal rate and your humidity is appropriate, everything should be going well. Too low a humidity or too high is not always good either. You wanna keep it in that ideal range of about 50% for chicks. Day 18 is a milestone in this process. This is when you're gonna to start to increase the humidity Stop manually turning the eggs and remove an automatic egg turner if you have it. Removing the physical turner is very important because leaving it in can make it more difficult or even impossible for chicks to break out of their shells. When candling at about day 18, you should see an embryo that takes up most of the space and appears as a dark area. Oh, you can even see movement sometimes if you're lucky. Ooh, it's kind of neat. You should re-examine each egg for cracks and leaks and update the air sac to confirm the development is still continuing. Another tip, after candling and removing the egg turner, place the eggs back inside with the large side up or the blunt end so that air cell is facing up and that is the ideal position for the chick to orient itself to hatch. Now, three days left, okay? Then you will get to meet your peeps. They will begin to hatch at about day 21, but be patient. Some can take up to day 23. It is very important to have your brooder set up and ready before the little ones arrive. You can use a chick corral, a large stock tank, or a large storage tub. Each chick should have about a half a square foot of space for the first four weeks. Oh, they grow quickly because you're gonna need a foot of space after that. Use the Manapro Fresh Flakes or other poultry bedding to line the bottom of your brooder to help keep the chicks warm and dry. Avoid cedar or aromatic chips. Some of these can be toxic to the little ones. Add a heat lamp, very important, to maintain a floor temperature between 90 and 95 degrees. They need to stay warm. Using a thermometer is very important to monitor this. You will also want to pre-purchase and have your chick feed, your chick waterer, and everything ready to go. Also, brooding multiple species together is an advanced technique. If you are a beginner, I would not recommend keeping multiple species together. It's just about that time. 
We've got our supplies and our brooder all set up and at the perfect temperature. It's time to welcome our new chicks to the family and the flock. I'm too excited. I better let Margaret take it from here. Oh, this is the exciting time when your baby chicks are about to enter the new world. Are you ready to meet them? All your patience and hard work are paying off. So your brooder's been set up. Are you ready to go? Let's explore what you're gonna see over the next few days. Beginning at day 21, for your chicks, you may start to hear a peep, peep. The little ones will start to peep along and encourage each other to start their hatching process. It's a wonderful sign to hear. You will also observe the chicks pipping. What is pipping? This is the initial break of the eggshell, allowing the chick to get fresh oxygen. <gasps> the first deep breath. A tip from the farm, sometimes cooled eggs prior to incubation will take a little longer than 21 days. So be patient, a little more patience, if you do not see progress right on day 21 and wait until at least day 23 before giving up. Over the next 24 to 72 hours, you will witness your viable eggs complete their hatching process. It's very exciting. Once they've regained their strength from pipping, the chick will begin zipping or creating the crack line around the circumference of the egg so that they can pop out. When your chicks finally break through, you will witness a very unstable chick that may bump into unhatched eggs or fall down. And that is all completely normal. You will also witness your little chicks take a few short little power naps before they regain energy and pop back up again, teetering around. Don't worry, this is also completely normal. Watching them gain their strength and begin to dry off and fluff up is so fun to watch. During the hatching process, it is important that you remember a few key things. Do not help them break out of their shells. Chicks will hatch on their own and it can take up to 24 hours to completely hatch. They can do it. Do not remove pieces of shell still attached to the chick. This could cause excessive bleeding. Do not open the incubator until all the chicks have hatched or until day 23. Chicks can survive just fine without food or water for the first three days of their life. They are still absorbing the yolk sac inside them, which gives them all the nutrition that they need for those first few days. Are you ready to transfer the little ones to the brooder? Let's do one last check before we open the incubator. First, is your brooder floor between 90 and 95 degrees? They need it warm. Is your bedding spread evenly and are your feeder and drinker filled? A tip from the farm, never place only one chick in the brooder. They are flock animals and need a buddy. Don't forget to wash your hands before and after handling your new chicks to prevent the spread of disease, both to the chicks and yourself. Now, over the next few days, watch your chicks' behavior. Make sure they are not too hot or too cold. If they are too hot, they will spread out along the wall of the brooder away from the heat source. If they're too cold, they will be huddled together under the heat lamp. So use your chicks as a guide. I hope you enjoy your new flock and we've enjoyed having you on our chick hatching journey. The time is finally here and soon we'll be squawking it up with the coolest chicks we've ever met. I hope you're ready, but if you want to learn more, we have a ton of great videos on our channel and even more on the way. Subscribe now so you don't miss any of them. We'll see you next time here with our new additions to the family at Coop Corner at Manapro Yoke Tube. See you later.